Hello and welcome to Travel Beans. I'm Emma, this is my partner, Alex. We are a British couple that own two camper vans in two continents, one in the US and one here in the UK, as well as renting many others around the world. So you could say that we have a lot of experience when it comes to living in camper vans. Social media can make living in a van seem like the perfect lifestyle choice. So today we wanted to offer you a more balanced view of things and discuss some some of the negatives of living in a van that may not come across on video. Now there are many different reasons that people live in vans and for us it's definitely a choice not out of necessity so this is a video more aimed at people like us who want to try out living an alternative lifestyle. So from all of our years of experience of living in a camper van, Alex, what would you say has been the worst? Uh, probably getting burnt alive. <laughs> It wasn't great. Okay, we didn't get burned alive. We escaped the camper van. <laughs> so who knew that these f***ers burn? <laughs> and they burn hard. <laughs> that definitely was not one of the things we expected to happen when living in a camper van. So when we were driving, it caught fire. We still don't know why. And it burnt to the ground. Yeah. We lost that van. But they also can burn down in other ways. Yeah. Like if you're cooking and then there's a gas leak or an electrical leak, especially if you're converting it yourself, be super careful because you really could burn it down to the ground. Having had that experience when we were in the US, it's definitely scarred us. It's like we're super paranoid now about anything to do with fires. We do laugh. But you have to laugh, otherwise you cry. <laughs> but it really was terrifying. It really was terrifying. And we don't want to like instill fear into you guys for the excitement of moving into a van. Maybe you're about to do it. But it's worth keeping it in the back of your mind that it could happen and to have the appropriate safety equipment on board ready to deal with that if it happens. The thing that really sucks about your van catching fire <laughs> I mean, other than the trauma and everything that goes with it, is that it's your home and your home is gone. And of course, like houses can catch fire, but I feel like you're not only losing your vehicle in something like that, you're losing your vehicle plus your home. And that goes for other things as well. So it's not only if it catches fire, but also if you're in an accident or something like that. Driving's one of the highest risk activities that people do on a daily basis so the more you're driving around in your home the more likely it is that you could get in an accident and then not only are you without your vehicle but you're also without your home the second thing that i never would have expected <laughs> was some biblical shit guys <laughs> i know exactly what you're gonna say we were plagued <laughs> by everything under the sun so we had, out of nowhere, a fly infestation yep. inside our camper van and it was disgusting. Yeah, it was as disgusting as it, it sounds. When we were in the US, our van was infested with cluster flies, which were trying to hibernate in our van for winter. It was an absolute nightmare. We couldn't sleep in the van. We were actually driven out of it and ended up having to stay in motels for nights on end. We finally got rid of those flies. You think that would be it? No, we deserved to be infested by more things, this time rodents. <laughs> and over the course of our trip, in the US, in our camper van, we got riddled with rodents. Yeah. Love that sentence, riddled with rodents. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> I get that tattooed. <laughs> so we have learned a lot about the animal kingdom in the last six months, and it turns out that mice, especially if there's a hole, an orifice, anything, they will find their way in. Okay, they didn't... They an didn't, orifice! Okay, they didn't get inside us. But they would. That's how f they are. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> You're killing me! Stop it! Stop it! In all seriousness, guys, living with rodents in the van is no joke at all. It is horrible. You can hear them crawling in the walls. It's nasty. And I do think that that is more of a problem in the US than it is in the UK. We definitely heard of a lot of people who had that issue when we were out in the States. We know quite a few people who live in their vans here in the UK and that's never come up as being a big problem. So I guess it depends on the country that you're in, but be aware that that might be something that you have to deal with at some point. And before you leave us a comment and tell us that little mice aren't that bad, wait until they poo under your pillow and then you tell me it's not that bad. <laughs> Because it is, it's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. The next issue is safety and security. Now, we have actually been very lucky so far 
touch wood in this van and our van in the US and that we haven't had any break-ins. However, there are so many stories. All you have to do is search on YouTube and you can see there are a lot of other people who have not been so lucky. And it's definitely a source of anxiety with me whenever I leave the van alone anywhere, especially in any cities or any kind of um, free camping spots that might seem a little bit dodgy. Whenever we walk away from the van, I do get this pang of like, please, please, please be there when I get back. Because not only could people break in and steal stuff from your van but also they could steal the entire van and then you're homeless also me and alex live in the van together so this isn't such a big issue but i have done some solo van life on my own and as a woman i think it would be a little nerve-wracking because you don't know what kind of weirdos are out there and obviously when she's with me she's completely safe because I i'm know. massive <laughs> Probably the most asked question we get is, how do you go to the toilet, you freaks? <laughs> like everyone else. We have lived in a range of camper vans that have toilets, have either a compost toilet like I have here, it's empty at least. <laughs> and in Japan, we stayed in a camper van with no toilet whatsoever. All of these options can potentially restrict you in different places. Like in the US, we have a van with a toilet, but we do have to empty it every couple of days because of Emma's massive poos. Excuse me? <laughs> Massive! With the built-in toilets, the pipes and everything, it can start to smell over time. Whereas with a compost toilet like this, you can get rid of it quickly. But if you don't, it's just in this box <laughs> in your car. So you're just taking your waste for a drive. <laughs> which feels a bit odd to me, at least. <laughs> Taking your waste for a drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we, we tend to just use this for onesies and absolutely emergency twosies. <laughs> And then finally, if you don't have a toilet at all, then mostly you're gonna need to use public toilets, which can kind of restrict the places that you wanna go to. Public toilets traditionally are not really that nice. In Japan, they are lovely, which is a bonus. Or with that method, if you're pretty comfortable, get yourself a shovel, walk down the high street. <laughs> <laughs> high street? <laughs> and start digging. <laughs> The next point is weather. Weather definitely affects you more living in a van than it does living in a house because you haven't got so much space. In the last video, we do talk a little bit how the weather has affected our mood when living in the van because when it's a beautiful sunny day and you have lots of nature spots to go and explore, it can be really great for your mental health. When it's a naff, rainy, miserable, cold, disgusting day outside, you can feel a little bit trapped. On the flip side, when you get things like a heat wave and it's extremely hot in the yeah. van, it's hard to cool down. And then outside, all the mozzies are waiting for you. So there's, <laughs> there's nowhere for you to go. There are, of course, ways around it with things like air conditioning systems, but that comes at a cost and you also have to think of how you're gonna power it. So there are solutions to these problems, but you just have to kind of work your way around them. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is the stigma of living in your van. Because even though it's become a lot more popular on social media over recent years and therefore a lot more accepted, there are still a lot of people who judge. Now this judgment can take a lot of different forms. It can either be something like funny looks, the odd comment, or it can be the other end of the spectrum where people can actually be quite rude and aggressive towards you simply for living in your van. In some places, the locals really do not like people staying in their vans nearby and they will beep and honk and approach you when you stay in those places. We have had that a few times in places like Scotland, especially where I think they tend to get a lot of campers staying in places. But all in all, we have actually been very lucky because we don't free camp all the time. We do split our time between campsites and free spots. So I think the more time you spend at free spots, you definitely open yourself up to more scrutiny when it comes to the locals. But you do save a lot of money doing it that way. So if you have thick skin and you can handle the comments and the looks and the judgment. Or a dreaded knock. Or the dreaded knock. I get a dreaded knock. Yeah. We've never had the knock, we've been pretty lucky, but a lot of people do get the knock. And it's not always from police, it can quite often just be from local residents being like, bugger off guys, get out of here. Or youths. <laughs> Youths? You, youths have a tendency to knock, don't they? I imagine so. I don't know. In their souped up cars, <laughs> making loud noises. <laughs> you sound so old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I imagine if you stayed in like a city centre, you might get some drunks knocking on the windows or the doors or something at night. But other than that, I feel like a lot of it is just what you, you can deal with and what you personally can put up with. For us, any kind of aggression like that, we wouldn't be able to sleep at night. We'd be super anxious. So we'd end up probably moving to the next spot anyway. So it depends on the person, but it's definitely something worth keeping in mind. One of the hardest things for me about van life is that it is so slow. <laughs> and some people go, yeah, enjoy the slow life, but I'm not one of those people, okay? <laughs> I can still enjoy it, but I'm not one of those people. No. I am someone that is always on time, and Emma is not. When I make a 10 things not to be with Emma video, that will be one of my reasons. Oh, so, so is that in the works, is it? Yeah. Nice. Little everyday tasks that you do at home just seem to take about 10 times longer in the van. Things like washing up, have to boil the kettle to be able to do it. Even boiling the kettle for us involves setting up the gas canister, setting up the cooker <laughs> to be true. able to do it. Oh wait, we haven't got any water. We need to go and fill up water to fill up the kettle. Yeah. So now I've got to go traipsing and lugging this thing around to go and fill up. Or maybe I want to charge my phone, but actually our leisure battery is dead. So we need to drive around for a bit to charge it back up to be able to do the little bit of charging. <laughs> And if we do want to drive around to charge up the leisure battery, we have to put everything away before we can drive anywhere. Everything. Otherwise it will just go flying off the shelves. <laughs> and that takes at least 10, 15 minutes to pack everything up. And this is a very small van and maybe that's the problem. As you will see here, just even in the footwell, we've just got stuff. We just have to use every little bit of space. So we're always moving things back and forth. We've got this pop top, which is great, which makes our tiny van basically double in size but putting that down takes a bit of time so we can never get off in a hurry things like washing up showering filling up with water these aren't things that you can avoid doing either they have to be done some of those things have to be done almost daily so they are something that have to be factored into your trips whenever we go away on our filming trips we always try and take that into account when it comes to the planning and we try not to cram too much sightseeing into one day because we know that once you team it up with all the practical stuff you have to do around the van you're not left with much time next up is keeping clean and that means myself the van and all my clothes i don't clean as much as i used to <laughs> and i didn't used to clean very much <laughs> There's a reason why people have a preconception about people living in their vans being smelly hippies. <laughs> I do a lot of sniff tests. <laughs> you really you know? do. <laughs> if it passes, then another day we shall go <laughs> without being clean. We have a very small camper van, as you can see, so we don't have a shower in ours. If you don't have a shower in your van, it's another one of those things that takes up time in your day. You have to go searching for a good place to have a shower, which isn't so easy depending on the country that you're in. The same goes for laundry. You have to find a laundrette or a campsite that has laundry facilities in them. And laundrettes are really depressing places. <laughs> I was just telling that to Emma the other day. You was. I really don't like them. I don't know why. And we never have cash on us as well. And they never seem to have change machines. This day and age. So annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and I also feel like I am constantly in the process of sweeping out and cleaning all the crap that I gets inside into the van. Yeah, that Alex has brought into the van, i.e. sand, mud, dirt, all of this stuff. Don't forget <laughs> the crumbs from the food for me eating in the bed. It is a constant work in progress to keep this van looking nice and tidy and feeling like a nice clean place to live. I think any small space is going to be the same. It's going to get dirty and it's going to get dirty fast. So it's just something you're going to always be having to keep on top of. And while we're talking about being clean, I also feel that we should talk about mold because mold is a huge problem in camper vans, especially in damp countries like the UK. I think one of the most common places to get mold in camper vans tends to be under the mattress. So we have like a special layer that we put underneath our mattress that gives it a bit of ventilation. And we also have some holes in the wood underneath, which makes up the bed. But that is something that you need to figure out. How are you gonna keep it ventilated and stop mold from growing and causing a health hazard? That's just one of the lovely things that you have to think about when you live inside a van. The final point is something that I didn't expect would be the case, but 
is the case quite often. And the van life is quite boring. <laughs> like, it can be really, really boring. Okay. Especially the tedious, monotonous chores of having to do the water, the washing up, those kind of things. Yeah. That gets old really quickly. But just in general, the novelty of van life can wear off quite quickly. And I think it's like this with everything in life and it's kind of human nature. But the exploring parts, the highs are awesome, but there is a lot of dead time. In the winter, it gets long nights, so there's a lot of dead time inside. But for me especially, I find myself lacking purpose when I go on these really long, never-ending trips. So I found that doing short, sharp trips with purpose seems to work really well. So for example, doing the NC500 around the north of Scotland, or driving to Switzerland to go and enjoy winter van life or in Austria, or even doing a road trip across America to go and see the national parks. Uh, having something to do and a reason and a goal mm. seems to be the big difference for me for enjoying it. I think we're also really lucky because we film our time in the van and filming and releasing these videos each week definitely gives some structure to our lives. I think if we were just living in the van, traveling around and not filming, we wouldn't have that structure and I think we would go insane. <laughs> Absolutely. I also think for many of you, you wouldn't suffer with this problem, but I think I have ADHD, self, <laughs> self-diagnosed in the last year and I can't switch off, I can't relax. So if you're the kind of person that is good at relaxing, if you can relax by the pool or by the beach, then I think the slow van life is definitely going to be for you. If you're someone like me that needs to be doing something all of the time... <laughs> then start filming it, basically. Then start filming because... <laughs> <laughs> it keeps you occupied. <laughs> so to conclude, we still love living in a camper van. It's definitely our favourite way to travel out of all of the methods. Yeah. But these reasons are why we wouldn't live in a camper van full time Anymore. anymore. Over the last six months we have been splitting our time with the camper vans, with hotels, different experiences and it's been perfect and we're yeah. always feeling refreshed. We find if we're in the camper van for too long we get burnt out very quickly. Yeah we go crazy as well with cabin fever especially when traveling around in the winter time. Traveling around in the summer and winter are two very different ball games each with their own problems of course but traveling in winter definitely has a few more bumps in the road that I don't love to do for long stints of time. I hope this was a useful video for you guys and it wasn't just us complaining <laughs> for ages. Um, let us know in the comments, can you relate to any of the things that we've talked about with living in a van? Would any of these things put you off if you don't live in a camper van? Yeah. And what did we miss out? What other things suck when you live in a camper van? Yeah, let's just all complain. Let's just all do a big dump of complaints in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Come on guys, take a dump on us. And <laughs> As we've just dumped on you. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give us a big fat thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And nothing left to say. We'll see you next time and beans out.